Hi everybody, I'm Sin. Welcome to The Book Nook, where we talk about the awesomeness that is books. Because I love it, you love it, that's why we're here. And today we're going to talk about my top five paranormal books that you need to read. If you have even an inkling of interest in the paranormal, this is a list of books that will help you open that door and step into the weird... Just wanted you guys to see my shirt. If you don't know who uh, this guy is, we have a whole playlist full of them. I'll put a link down in the uh, channel. John Tenney is a paranormal investigator that has been in this field for years. Some of these books were recommended by John Tenney, and then some of the other ones were also recommended by Greg Newkirk of the Traveling Paranormal and Occult Museum. And then I think one of them was uh, just something I had seen in Hellier, which is the docuseries that Greg and Dana Newkirk made, which I've mentioned in a few videos, and I can put a link to that down on the channel as well if you'd like to check it out, because that's all related to paranormal, and that's what we're talking about today, so let's get into it. All right, so the first book that I think is kind of like a major stepping stone into the paranormal, this is a book that's just, it's a must-have resource, I think, for anybody interested in the topics of UFOs, alien contact, uh, fairy folklore, and paranormal encounters. And it's it lays the groundwork for understanding the odd events that we tend to lump together into the flying saucer category and kind of like pulls it all together. And I'm going to actually read the inside flap because it gives you a, a good insight of what it's about. Story time with sin. All right. Although the government-sponsored Condon report claimed that flying saucers pose no threat and therefore are unworthy of study, in fact, thousands of reliable witnesses over the past century have claimed to have observed and in some cases even communicated with extraterrestrial objects and creatures. In this book, Jacques Vallée, a mathematician and astronomer, discusses and explores many of the most interesting reports through 1968 and turns his attention to the fact that throughout history and all parts of the world, there is an incredible, consistent folk tradition dealing with visitation from heaven, hell, Elfland, Magonia, whatever its name. The experience of Joe Simonton, a Wisconsin farmer who, he, who was, he claims, visited by creatures who asked for help and gave him food. And this is, if you've ever heard the story of the infamous space pancakes, that is what that's about. And I thought in the story too, they referred to the creatures as they looked like elves or something of the sort. So in this book, the first half of the book kind of goes into the different creature sightings and is very fascinating and kind of gets into how it links in with, with folklore and the different types of humanoids and, and creatures that are seen and the different types of flying objects that are seen too from these weird like airships that had anchors on them to what would be considered a UFO today like the classic you know saucer shaped vehicle and it, it's pretty fascinating and then the last half of the book is all the case studies and it goes like from the early 1800s all the way up until like I think 1968 and it's fascinating and it's it's a great roadmap and starting point if you want to get into that weird <laughs> weird and wild world that is the paranormal passports in magonia by jacques Vallée. and the next one we have this is recommended by john tenney this is demonic reality by patrick harper i had asked john a while back of some good books to get into and this is one of the ones that he recommended to me so we're going to read the inside cover of this one, too, because I thought it gave a pretty great synopsis of it. Maybe describe, we'll describe it better than I, I would in my ramblings. So, Daemonic Reality, a field guide to the other world. Daemonic Reality is a sweeping look at the strange, otherworldly events in the world around us. UFOs, fairies, phantom animals, visions of the Virgin Mary, alien abductions, and mysterious lights in the sky. But rather than simply listing the events, Patrick Harper shows how they can all be tied together using his concept of the demonic reality. So he starts with a look at the events and he shows how they're connected using ideas kind of proposed by Carl Jung 
and some of the poets uh, Yeats and William Blake. And then he connects the old fashioned fairies to the modern day occupants of the UFOs. And he kind of highlights the similarities. And then he highlights the similarities and sightings of the older black dogs, the recent mysterious cats, yetis, yowies, Bigfoot, lights in the sky of existence, <laughs> lights in the sky have existed throughout history. Once they were seen as witches, now they are UFOs. So just how stuff changes throughout the time and how folklore also ties into it. And this is such an, oh, so shiny. So sorry. <laughs> sorry for the shine. Is a good, another good one that highly compliments Passport to Magonia. Demonic Reality, Patrick Harper. Recommended by John Tenney. So the next book is The Mothman Prophecies by John Keel. And I mean, if we're getting into the paranormal, I feel like I, you gotta have a book by John Keel. This one is a great one to get into. It is all about the weird events that happened in Point Pleasant, Virginia in, sorry, I gotta look for the year, 1966. So I'll read you the back, give you a synopsis of this one as well. We actually visited Point Pleasant, Virginia this past year. But let me let me read this real quick and then I'll talk about that. So for 13 months, the town of Point Pleasant is gripped by a real life nightmare culminating in a tragedy that makes headlines around the world. And that is with the collapse of the Silver Bridge. So it, it kind of centers around that and when and how that happened. So strange occurrences and sightings, including a bizarre winged apparition that becomes known as the Mothman, troubles this ordinary American community. Mysterious lights are seen moving across the sky. Domestic animals are found slaughtered and mutilated. And journalist John Keel, he arrives to investigate these weird events that are going on and he finds himself an integral part of an eerie and unfathomable mystery. They also made this into a movie. So if you wanted to check out the movie too and read the book, whichever one you want to do. Also, speaking of Mothman, Mothman is my favorite cryptid. I'm not sure why, but Mothman is my favorite. What's your favorite cryptid? Let me know down in the comments if you have one. Maybe you don't. We went to uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia this past year, and I will grab some photos to put up here, and uh, I'll show you a few a few from, from the trip. We went to the domes where they had, so they talk about the TNT domes, which were old military storage unit, units, basically for weapons. And so we went there and they're, they're all abandoned and they're in this like weird swampy area and it's really hard to find. There's no sign. And we drove around for like two hours trying to find the TNT area. It took a long time, but it was worth it because it was pretty cool. And inside the domes, there's this crazy echo and it's just, it's, it's a little disorienting and weird, but oh, it was so cool. It was so cool to see it, especially after seeing Hellier. If you've seen Hellier, you know, and then reading this book too. It's, it's kind of neat to like, you read about the place and then actually going and visiting it. So that was, it was a pretty, pretty neat experience. All right. So the next book we have is dun, 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 Where the Footprints End. And this is by Timothy Renner and Joshua Cutchen. They were both in the first PhenomenaCon, which was the paranormal online convention put on by Greg and Dana Newkirk of the Paranormal and Occult Traveling Museum. When uh, everything happened that's happened in the last few years with COVID and lockdowns, they decided that since, you know, no one could go out and, and do anything and they were kind of stuck inside and so were we, that they would put on a paranormal convention and uh they just had their third one, and it's pretty amazing. And both of these guys were actually featured. And that's where I heard about this book was through PhenomenaCon, the first one. This is one of the best books on the Bigfoot phenomena that I've ever read. It ties in ideas that I had never even thought about, like with poltergeist phenomena and how some of that's very similar to the Bigfoot phenomena. The artwork, it was done by... Timothy Renner, he does all the artwork. It's very, very beautiful. And he also has a podcast called Strange Familiars, which I'll put a link 
down in the below if you guys want to check that out too, if you're into the weird. There's a volume two and it looks weird because of the green screen, but there's two. You got to get the second volume as well. So I'm going to read you a little bit of the synopsis to whet your appetite. That sounded awkward. All right. Well, anyways, I'm going to read a little bit of this to tell you a little bit about it. Our forests seem to be hiding something much more complex than an undiscovered gorilla. Bigfoot may be howling from a lonely mountaintop, but the Bigfoot phenomena is whispering secrets. If only we will listen. Eyewitnesses, investigators, and cryptozoologists worldwide contend ample evidence exists supporting the survival of large, hairy, ape-like creatures alongside mankind today, lurking in the wilderness. By all appearances, these beings seem wholly natural, interacting with their surroundings and leaving behind hair, blood, droppings, and of course, footprints. Yet, despite this apparently physical nature, Bigfoot and its hairy hominid kin consistently appear mired in high strangeness. The peculiar, ineffable, and nonsensical absurdities so often encountered in paranormal phenomena. Some settings seem more consistent with mythology than biology. Bigfoot often present supernatural attributes like luminescent eyes or the ability to pass ghost-like through structures. Anomalous lights are regularly seen in areas of frequent Sasquatch activity. Footprints persistently, if rarely, display odd-numbered toes. And, most bafflingly, Bigfoot tracks suddenly terminate in the middle of untouched terrain. Like they just like beamed up or something. So yeah, where are the footprints in volume one and volume two. Fantastic. Especially if you're interested in Bigfoot. Honestly, one of like some of the best literature I've read on Bigfoot. Highly recommend. Yeah, thank you guys for hanging out. If you had fun hanging out, boop that like button. Come back, see me again. And we'll talk about more weird stuff and more books and just have good bookish conversations. So those were my top five paranormal books that you need to read. And if you were to start with just one, I would say Passport to Magonia by Jacques Vallée. Just, like I said, it's a roadmap. It's such a great book and it just, it gets your, your toe in the waters you know, start creaking open that door into the weird. Sorry, I had to... <laughs> my hair is blocking Teddy's face. Until next time, read a good book, stay weird, and we'll see you later. Bye!